So this video will give an overview of population depression bugs in one trial earlier, and this will be a prerequisite for foreign bug research, which will soon be published. So um, I will talk to one population. It's just um, just if you um, generate a new chunk, it first doesn't generate all the blocks in it. It only generates like stone and grass and bedrock. And other blocks like ores and spawners only get placed afterwards. If you load a two by two grid of chunks in the positive x and z direction, when it populates, and when it gets populated, it places blocks in a um, fixing by fixing area, which is eight offsets from from the chunk borders of its population. And when there's update depression, namely if you cause too many block updates at once, you crash the game. But if this um, these block updates, which overflowed the, the stack, um, were caused by a play action, when the game continues as normal, even though the, the game crashed, like the crash um, is caught but not handled and the game just continued, update depression. And um, like the, the history of Taiwan population update depression is that um, both were basically discovered by Panda for 9 and 4. So um, Panda for 9 and 4, Kabu PC and Daniel Coates um, first figured out in 2013 how to abuse like Taiwan population to generate specific structure which we want. And um, three years later, Panda and Redstone Spire um, found like update depression. And they, of course, thought about combining the, the two things, but they considered the results so broken that they didn't publish them, but they only have unlisted videos about what happens if you combine Taiwan population with update depression. So um, nothing was published back then. They only found it and didn't publish it. And it took until 2019 until um, somebody else had the idea of combining Taiwan population with update depression, namely Kuhlman, that discovered that you can turn instant high ticks um, by update the pressing liquid pocket during the optimal population. So when a liquid pocket is placed, it first um, turns on instant high ticks and after it finishes being placed, it uh, turns it off. And he found that if you update the press it, then you can turn instant high ticks and that's super broken. Then in 2020, another um, population suppression bug was found that you can generate barrier blocks if you um, update the press an igloo population um, in such a way that a tile entity gets replaced by a different tile entity. Um, you can also watch that video. And now the topic of this video will be additional um, update suppression bugs in Taiwan population which were found during scrolling block research. So um, in 2020, Kuhlman, XCOM, and Earth Computer and a few others started like a giant research project in scrolling block swaps. And um, there will be soon more stuff published about this. And as a byproduct of this research project, we have even more population suppression bugs. Namely, we have you now um, the Western Power Flag, which I will show, and invisible chunks. So I will now go into the game and show this stuff. So here's a world where I set up some of these population suppression dishes. Fix the clever. Um, and then slide in, then we will be able to see an invisible chunk and also we will see that the redstone dust flag has been turned off. Um, I just need to make sure that I don't get an autosave to apply to invisible chunk because otherwise it will um, not be invisible. So let's see how this will fit. It didn't work. Ah, yes, it did it. Okay. So right here we see um, uh, a chunk which is invisible. The reason why this chunk is invisible is because it's uh, unpopulated and unpopulated chunks don't send any packets to the player. So, so this is an unpopulated chunk and you also can't see anything. But it's uh, fully there server side. So if I just um, do something which is operated server side, it will still work. So like I can, for example, make a flying machine which goes through this and it will become invisible and become visible again on the other side. So if I just make a flying machine here, then um, and see it flies through there. Call server side, this is just an entity processing chunk. The only thing which is strange about this chunk server side is that it's unpopulated, even though the area I wanted is completely loaded. But um, this, this chunk is, is just invisible and unpopulated. Um, one nice thing is that um, you can, this is a method which allows um, you to place like um, unmovable block in. Um, in like unpopulated chunks, like usually if you want to place uh, unmovable blocks in unpopulated chunks, it's not really possible because uh, you can't push them in with flag machines. But with this method, you can at least place them on the chunk border. So like without invisible chunks, you cannot place any unmovable blocks in unpopulated chunks. But with this method, you can place unmovable blocks at the chunk border of an unpopulated chunk. So to get invisible chunk, what you can do, you can just load a circle of chunks where you load, um, don't load the middle chunk, but you load all chunks around it. And to make sure that some of the chunks um, in the left down corner, um, like with the least x and z coordinates, are unpopulated. And if you then load the middle chunk and update to press the population of this chunk, then um, it will itself get populated, but it will never populate the other three chunks. And then you have these, um, you get three invisible chunks if you do this. Because uh, the reason is if you load the middle chunk, 
it will first try to populate the save, so it will check whether it's part of a 2x2 grid in the positive x and z direction, and then it will populate, and um, only after it has finished this population will it try to populate the other three chunks. Um, so if this chunk um, update is crucial suppressive of population, then the other three chunks will never try to populate, even though they are part of a loaded 2x2 grid, and then uh, you can load the rest of the area and they will still not load because only the part of a um, positive 2x2 would, would ever attempt to um, populate these chunks. And then you have permanently an unpopulated chunk and have the area alone uh, this loaded. Okay, and the, the other um, population suppression bug which we have here is uh, has to do with redstone dust power. Namely, if we've turned out, uh, um, out the redstone dust power, so right here we have a piece of redstone dust which should power these blocks, but we've um, update suppressed this um, chunk over here in such a way that all redstone dust blocks um, currently don't provide any power to any blocks uh, anywhere in the world. Okay, um, Okay. so um, the way you get the redstone dust power flag uh, suppressed is um, you need to just make sure that the chunk you update suppress is loaded while a piece of redstone dust is checking whether it's powered or not. Um, in some senses, it's not really um, a population suppression badge because it only has to do with uh, like the Redstone wire code, but um, the only reliable way to turn it off is with population suppression. So basically, if a piece of redstone dust checks whether it should get powered or not, it will first turn off the global redstone dust power flag and make it so that no redstone dust can power anything in the world, and then it will check whether it's getting powered from something, and it needs to do that to prevent itself uh, it from being powered by itself. And if you then populate a chunk while like if you use the check of the redstone dust whether it's powered or not to load a chunk, and if you update the first chunk population, then the redstone dust power flag will be off. So currently, redstone dust doesn't power anything. Okay, and um, for example, in this setup, we have this rail line here, and it leads to this chunk. Um, this chunk gets populated by this uh, redstone dust checking whether it should get powered or not. So, like the chunk borders are right here. So, like when this redstone dust checks whether it should get powered or not, it tries to check whether there's maybe a repeater from this chunk pointing into this block or something. And when it loads this chunk, and when this chunk loads, it um, update suppresses because it places a liquid in this chunk, and we have just uh, a few observers forming a clock right here, which cause the update suppression. And this is actually something we, we um, I should remark here that um, Kuhlman used for his instant tactic, um, which he used like several thousand rails, and also on Prototech they used several thousand rails for the instant tactic switch. But this is actually not necessary. You just need four observers or some other tactic circle um, because when the liquids get placed, instant tactics are, got, are turned on and then you um, can use the instant tactics to um, update suppress it more easily. So um, you don't have to build thousands of rails to um, turn on instant tactics or do other update suppression glitches. So here's an overview of uh, three different global flags. First we have instant falling. You can turn off instant falling whenever you update suppress any chunk population because it sets, gets set to true at the beginning of chunk, chunk population. And it gets set to false at the end of chunk population. And if you want to turn off instant falling again, you just have to populate any chunk anywhere in the world, and then it's off again. And instant falling is a dimension independent flag. This means if you turn on instant falling in the overworld, you will also have instant falling in the never and the end. And if you turn it on in the never, you also have it in the overworld in the end. Then, uh, secondly, instant high ticks uh, you get if you update suppress any liquid pocket placement, and uh, instant high ticks get turned off again if you populate a chunk which places liquid pocket. And instant tile tick is um, not dimension independent, it's dimension dependent. This means if you turn on instant tile ticks in the overworld, you only have instant tile ticks in the overworld, and you do not have instant tile ticks in the never or the end. And you can also turn on instant tile ticks in the never by update suppressing lava pockets, and then you only have instant tile ticks in the never. And finally, we have the redstone dust power flag. You get the redstone dust power flag, and you can turn it off if you load a chunk um, through a redstone dust power check and um, make the uh, chunk population update suppress, and you can turn it off again if you update any redstone dust in the world, and it's also dimension independent, which means if you turn off the redstone dust power in the overworld, it will also be off in the never and in the end. So to turn off the redstone dust power flag, you need to do a complicated uh, suppression dish, but to turn it on, all you need to do is send a single block update to any redstone wire block anywhere in the world. So currently I've turned off the redstone power flag, but if I just give a single block update to this redstone wire block by uh, placing a block next to it, then the redstone power flag will be turned on again and all of these things uh, get powered again. A few more, for more remarks on instant ticks. First, there is no way of turning on instant ticks in the end, and also no way to turn it off if you have turned on. So if you have any ideas which involve instant ticks in the end, it's not um, vanilla friendly. Like 
maybe you can do it with log4j or warhammer or whatever, but there, there's no legit known way to get infantile text in the end in vanilla. So that just doesn't exist. And secondly, uh, if you have infantile text on, then infantile text blocks will only fire if they are more than eight blocks away from unloaded chunks. So if you make any contraptions which are near unloaded chunks, while infantile text are on, then you need to make sure that you stay eight blocks away from unloaded chunks, otherwise it will not work. And um, we will soon publish some videos about falling block contraptions, which are instant contraption near unloaded chunks. So, so this is very important to keep in mind when you build these contraptions. Also over here we have a natural example of um, a liquid on instant text flowing into a region where instant text no longer get processed. So instant text only get processed if there are um, eight blocks away from unloaded chunks. And here we have a liquid which flew into an area while this, this chunk over here was unloaded and then it stopped flowing. 